my basic plan is to spend the next 18 months driving around and seeing the country. Uh, we'll see how that works out. You know, I'm completely flexible. I really don't plan a whole lot. I really don't know like where I'm going to be tomorrow night at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it works out well for me because I find a lot of interesting things, you know, just pop up. Sure, and you've been on the road five months now. Yes. So what what did you how did did, did it start exactly this way? What did you change, and what's your plans with the truck? The camper is a go fast camper, and it's uh, I bought it for two reasons. One, it's very light. It only weighs about 265 pounds on the back of this truck, and two, the price point was right, which was at the time about seven thousand um, dollars. I like the fact that, it, as you see it right now, it's in what they call cabana mode. So everything opens up, and of course, I can close everything up quite easily. And the tent just drops into the space above. But the other factor I like about the Go Fast Camper is this space, this open space I'm in right now, is what they call a perfect square. And I can move sections and fill up this square. I can fill up the entire area or I can leave sections out to give me a place to come down at night if I'm sleeping up top. But usually in bad weather or cold weather, and that's certainly what I've done mostly this winter, is just stay down below. So I can close up the top or even, and even drop the tent in bad weather and just sleep down here, mm -hmm. which I do a lot. <laughs> and this is a six and a half foot Tacoma. This is a uh, six, six foot bed. Six foot bed, so you, you have just enough space that you can stretch your legs. Right, I'm probably five nine. So. Nice. And I usually sleep on my side and curl up. Now some of the changes I've done, I put in the molly panels above and below to hang things from. I also built this uh, monitor stand, so now I have a uh, 27 inch monitor that I can plug my laptop into. And do you, dry, do you leave that up? Do you take it down? No, I, I take it off. So it just comes off like that. Oh, okay. And I uh, use put it on the pillows and then I put it on top of the, uh, the ice box when I'm driving. Okay. To keep it from getting, you know, destroyed. Sure, yeah. <laughs> because it would get destroyed back here. But yeah, it, it goes on in seconds and uh, works out quite well. Walk, walk me through the components because I, I see you've got a lot of stuff down here and you know what what, do you, what systems are you running? Okay, uh, this is the electrical box that I put in and this powers the lights. So I've got LED lighting up top here, both uh, red and white. Um, and I've also got uh, tail tail lights there on the on the back of the tailgate. Okay. Uh, the other three switches are empty at the moment in case I want to put something else in. Uh, this bag contains all of my solar power cords and connectors for my portable solar panels, which I usually put out during the day. Uh, this is a bracket that I've welded up together, welded up to hold the base of the monitor stand. Mm -hmm. And I can pull the whole thing out and it, this whole thing will come out fairly easily. I have a water port, which is a three and a half, four gallon water container that is roto molded so it can be pressure washed. I mean I can I can fill it up and I can pressurize it with my air compressor and then I just stick it in the sun for a few hours and then I put on a shower nozzle and I have a hot shower. Hmm. Um, so that's been working out very well for me. Um, the interior of the truck can be completely removed. So, I will demonstrate that. We were talking about this earlier, so it's such an effective method of creating a flat well, structure. Actually, I can, my, uh, my lithium batteries are up here. So this is my battery box for my 480 amp hours of lithium. And that run is your, your truck is charging it most of the time or you have solar that plugs in or how, how I have a, a Red Arc DC to DC charger that uh, charges it when I'm on the road, and I have solar panels for when I'm not moving. So, I get a whole open truck back. Yes, so now the truck opens up completely. I could even pull the batteries out if I wanted to pull them out. Let's say I was staying in a hotel room, I could pull the batteries out and use the wall charger to charge them up if I decide to. 
And sometimes when I want to balance the batteries, I will do that. So is this your, oh, you're setting your office setup right this now. This is my office, yeah. This will be my office. <laughs> this setup. is great. And are you working on the road or is it mostly? Um, I can. I'm set up as a contractor to do that. I haven't got any uh, contracts at the moment, but that is the plan down the road. So, with this setup, I have the monitor and the keyboard, and uh, this is perfect for me yeah. because I can be completely enclose even in bad weather. And with the Starlink, you know, I can be anywhere and work. This is great. So you went to an aluminum extrusion class today. <laughs> did did you find a solution to improving egg crates, or is it the best? Is it the best you can do right now? I think the design, the, the way that I have it laid out with the egg crates is what I'm gonna replicate in 8020. Oh, interesting, point. okay. So it'll be, you know, a bench that comes this way, on basically an L shape. Yeah. Like I've got now. Okay. Um, and if I do that, then I'm gonna take the diesel heater out of the box in the back, and I'm gonna put it underneath mm -hmm. one of those. Very cool. Um, but yeah, I like the fact that currently, absolutely everything can come out of a truck relatively painlessly. Yeah which uh, is a huge help. So in a, I know the uh, GoFast camper has the bed on the top, and then of course the, the bed on the bottom that you've created. Is there a reason you're sleeping in the, on the bottom as opposed to the top? Beca only in the winter when it's cold. Mm -hmm. uh, when the wind is really blowing or the rain is coming or the snow and hail is coming down, I'll stay down below because it is a bit warmer. Now, it, it really doesn't matter because I have the diesel heater yeah. and I can heat, you know, it's designed to heat a much larger room area than this, so it'll heat the place up pretty fast. Sure. Um, but yeah, this is this is the setup I've got now, and uh, let me show you the stuff that I've done to the back seat. So it, it's mounted to the same hinges that the seat had originally, so I can open it up. I can get to the storage that's here. I've got some tools in there, stuff that I don't usually get to very often, and. On the other side, I have my Iceco refrigerator. Is that on slides or is no, that? No, uh... it, it just it just sits there. Okay. Fairly light. I can you know I can remove the uh, the food stuffs out of it and pull the refrigerator out. And occasionally I do that if I'm going to be in a hotel room for more than uh, one night. Instead of running the battery down while it sits, I'll just pull the whole refrigerator out and plug it into the wall of the hotel. And I see you created this really nice rack that holds all of your. Uh. Yes. Your miscellaneous goods. Right. This is a, a fold down rack that just I throw my, you know, my backpack stuffs, uh, occasional towels, my first aid kit, stuff I got to get to quickly if I have to. My raincoat usually goes up there. But uh, other than that, other than the lift, which is not much, maybe a two and a half inch lift, old, old man emu shocks, nitro chargers, and the Dakar heavy duty springs. Um, I've had it for three years. It's been a great suspension system for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's everywhere I've wanted to go. You know, I tell people the truck is far more capable than the driver at this point. So um, I'm, in 69,000 miles, I've had one flat tire. Oh. And that's the only breakdown. Oh, no, I did, I did lose the uh, top of a shock. I, I lost the bolt at the top of a shock tower about a month ago and I had to replace a rear shock. Mm -hmm. That's easy, it was like a hundred dollars. Yeah, and I see, is this the Prinsu rack system on the, no, this on the front is, uh, or? This looks like a Prinsu, but it's by a guy, I believe he's out of North Carolina, George Martin, Martin Off-Road. And uh, when the Go Fast Camper first came out, people were having to cut their Prinsu racks off. Oh yeah, I see put that. the camper on. You'll see a lot of Prinsu racks that are cut off. And he got the brilliant idea of saying, well, I'm going to design a rack that's specific to the GoFast camper. So he started selling ones that were made up without a problem. And I heard about him and I was like, yeah, sign me up, man. I want one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's been working great for me. Nice. And so the, the other side of the camper, you've got a bicycle. Ah. And so talk to me about like daily usage. Is this something you set up every day? Do you use your bike every day? Uh, well, if I want to have, of course, the office mode, the bike has to come out because the bike goes inside the bed of the truck when I'm driving. Um, this is a Himaway Zebra. Uh, it's an electric bike. The reason I got it was it reportedly has a 90 mile range. In reality, 
of course, maybe 30 or 40 miles at best, but it's very durable and very durable off-road. So the, the rationale for the bike is eventually the trail is gonna be too narrow for the truck where I'm going, but it might be single track to continue on. Mm -hmm. So at that point I get the bike out and I can take off on the bike because this is a thousand watt motor on the back of this thing. It's got a lot of torque. It'll really climb a hill. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's almost a motorcycle. And it's quite fast <laughs> to the point of being scary. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've uh, occasionally been camping and not wanted to tear down my entire camp and jump on the bike and go 15 miles to a small town and load up some groceries in my backpack and then ride back. Nice. <laughs> so uh, this is great. So what? Uh, what what in the setup works the best and what's sort of the the biggest improvement or the thing that you most need to fix at this point the thing that i most need to fix at this point hmm. well the table was a big one and yeah. i've just got the new table this weekend uh other than that um i've had a couple of small issues with the charging of the battery um the red arc DC to DC charger will drop into a float stage even when the battery wasn't fully charged mm. and I was trying to figure that out and it turns out there's a difference between battery ground and chassis ground and the Red Arc wants chassis ground. You'd think they'd be the same thing, especially since from the negative battery terminal to where it connects to the chassis is about that far. Mm -hmm. But no, it has to be on the chassis, not on the battery negative terminal. And once I did that, everything cleared up. So wow. all of my problems went away. That's great. Um, so the Red Arc will charge at 25 amps. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can check the battery monitor while I'm driving and see, yeah, okay, I'm getting 25 amps. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now you're from Baltimore originally. I was originally from Baltimore. I you've got a small shoebox and stuff left. <laughs> and other than that, you're in your Tacoma now, right? I'm in my Tacoma full time now. Wow. I'd, so say, I'd say my biggest problem at the moment is what am I going to do with all my winter clothing as it warms up? <laughs> I mean, I've got to carry it with me. I can't get rid of it. I know I'm going to need it. Yeah. I mean, just last night, it was cold. I, got, I pulled out my heavy winter coat, and I was like, man, I'm glad I didn't send this back to my sister. <laughs> so. so for someone that's uh, on the verge of maybe living in a Tacoma um, or building one out or living you know, extremely small, mm -hmm. what, what, what should you be thinking about that maybe they're not thinking about? You can never have too much solar, solar panels and you probably can't have too much battery, excess battery, house battery. Mm -hmm. ne never, ever, ever think you're gonna get away with running off of your car battery. Mm -hmm. And probably you don't need as much reserve capacity as I do, because I'm, I'm pretty sure a 100 amp hour lithium battery would power the refrigerator just fine. Yeah. But with the Starlink and running the monitor as often as I do, sometimes up to eight hours a day, that burns up a lot, it but does. you, you really want more, if, even if you don't get more battery, try and spend some money on some good solar panels. I use four of these Blue Eddy portables that are 120 watts each, mm -hmm. and I chain them together. And that, the reality is, you know, it says 120 watts. On a good day, I'll get 70 or 80 watts out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're never gonna get more than 70% out of a portable solar panel anyway. Yeah, yeah. But that's why I've got four of them instead of two. And I also have that 200 watt on the other side that I had when, that's an older one. I had that when I was on like, I was on a sailboat for 10 years. Oh, okay. And uh, that one came from, came with me from my sailboat. Cause you never get rid of this stuff. I mean, yeah. what are you gonna do? Throw out a perfectly functional solar panel? No, of course not. So I've gotten to know you in the last three or four days as a thrifty man. Can I can I ask what sort of budget you have as you travel? Yes, I'm trying to get to the point where I'm spending about $2,000 a month. I'm mm -hmm. um, currently not there yet because the first couple of months were rather expensive because I was still figuring things out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm currently around about $2,500 a month. Fantastic, that's great. And um, are you hoteling once a week, no, twice a month? Or what's, I, was what's it look like? I originally budgeted for hotels for twice a month. Okay. But I've discovered that if I get a hotel, I generally want to get two nights in a row because that gives me the whole day. Yeah. So I wake up in the morning, I've got the whole day in the room to like plan or edit videos yeah. or work, you know, do some work on the internet or something like that. And that's very helpful. So I've discovered I've been staying probably in hotels like 
four days a month. Mm -hmm. I rarely stay in paid campgrounds. I've done it once or twice, unless I get a great deal. I was in Death Valley for 12 days, and I stayed for 12 days because Furnace Creek Campground, because I'm over 62, I'm 63, it's only $8 a night for me. Oh, wow. So why not stay in Death Valley for 12 days if it's only eight bucks a night? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but usually I, I boondock. You know, I've been around the south, mostly in the southwest mm -hmm. the last five months, and I almost always, you can always find a place to pull off and camp. Mm -hmm. I don't really do stealth camping. I haven't done that, you know, sneak into a city and, and camp. Mm -hmm. But uh, It's a little harder to do in a, yeah. in a rig like this. Yes, you're, you're not very stealthy in a rig no. like this. So, no. and, I, and I'm not interested in that at all. You know, if I've got to be in that town, like I had to be in San Diego to get service done on the truck, I'm going to get a hotel room. That's mm -hmm. just going to be it. Yeah. Um, but moving forward, I'm hoping to head up roughly the, the Sierra mountain chain, mm -hmm. and I've been snowed out of most of it so far, but I'm probably just going to go over to the, wet, the uh, Pacific Coast and go up the Pacific Coast, and I'll probably have to stay in campgrounds there because there's no boondocking up there. Sure. But once you get into Northern California, there is. Yeah, and you always have Cracker Barrels and Walmarts, right? <laughs> I have never stayed in either one. No way! I, you know, I, I'd heard about Walmarts. Cracker Barrels, yeah. Cracker Barrels will let you our, stay. Our kids know the toy section like it's their own home. Better, probably. <laughs> so I'll probably have to give that a shot at some so, point. How do we... How do we... Oh, my, uh, my Instagram. <laughs> and eventually I will have a, uh, a YouTube channel, but... Uh, uh, high Mileage. High Mileage Life. High Mileage Life. I will try to be posting there almost daily from going forward from this point. Uh, words of advice. You're going to spend more the first couple of months that you're out than you thought. So don't worry about blowing your budget the first couple of months because, you know, I didn't realize I was going, you know, I needed the e-bike until mm -hmm. after I got out west and realized I needed some other form of transportation other than walking to get places. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just be budget in extra money for your first three months mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll probably do okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Sure thing. Well, what a great time. We camped next to Lance for four nights and uh, this is the very end of Overland Expo West. So we're one of the last few here. But it's been great. We sort of had a little Tacoma club by accident and we're wrapping up. Bye, Laura.